To have a national leader, you first need to have a nation. Before 1901, Australia was a place, but not a country. It was six separate colonies. Each with some form of elected representation, their own armies, their own stamps and railway systems, but all were British colonies. By the 1880s and 90s, there was an increased interest by the public in the idea that Australia was a nation. Henry Parks, a five-time Premier of New South Wales, was the most prominent advocate for the federation of the colonies into a single country. He also had a really mean looking beard. Australians got to vote either in favour or against nationhood in a referendum in 1899 in New South Wales, Queensland, South Australia, Tasmania and Victoria, and in 1900 in Western Australia. But not everyone got to vote. Only South Australia and West Australia allowed women to vote. If you were an Indigenous Australian, Asian, African or a Pacific Islander living in Australia, you couldn't vote in Queensland or in WA unless you owned property. Of those who did vote, the majority in every colony voted yes. With the British Parliament's approval of our constitution, the Commonwealth of Australia was born in a ceremony in Sydney Centennial Park on the 1st of January 1901. Edmund Barton, a lawyer from Sydney and one of the most passionate advocates for Federation, was made Acting Prime Minister until the elections could be held. The first elections for the Australian Parliament took place in late March 1901. Barton's group in Parliament, the Protectionists, got the most members with the help of the newly formed Labour Party, who was made Prime Minister. 